Shalom, everyone. This is uh, shalom, brother, shalom. brother D. We got brother Jody, Yo, Gary, JP, Roy, Mike, in the head's house. And uh, this is the uh, men's meeting, our first uh, recording as men. And uh, we decided to address the topic of leadership. So, and uh, we didn't prepare for the topic. We just chose a topic today. And we're just going off the top of our head of what we know, what we believe should be essential for leadership. So I chose Deuteronomy chapter four to start off for me. Deuteronomy chapter four, starting at verse one, it says, Now, Yisrael, listen to the statutes and to the ordinances which I teach you to do them, that you may live and go in and possess the land which Yahuwah, the Elohim of your fathers, gives to you. So obviously this is uh, commandments being given to Yisrael before they go into uh, the promised land. Verse 2, you shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you take away from it. That's very important for us, guys. If we want to be leaders, we need to guard ourselves from adding and taking away from Scripture. That's where accountability comes in. That's where we test all things together. And we're going to mess up on this, okay? We're going to mess up. But this is something we should all intentionally be trying to make a good effort to make sure we're not doing. Let's be really honest and sincere with ourselves. Many times we like to do commentary on Scripture, and we like to say what the Scripture is saying when the Scripture ain't saying what we're saying. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's a real dangerous thing, but very important. Yahuwah has words. Don't add to or take away from it. Neither shall you take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahuwah, your Elohim, which I command you. It's also important not to just teach, but to obey. You know, as a matter of fact, that should be like the first step. You should be obeying. I'd rather somebody obey first and teach later. Um, verse 3. Your eyes have seen what Yahuwah did because of Baal Peor. For Yahuwah your Elohim has destroyed all the men who followed Baal Peor from among you. But you who were, who were faithful to Yahuwah your Elohim are all alive today. We can talk about Baal Peor, Baal Peor, okay? Baal, which means master or lord, and uh, obviously has to do with idolatry and uh, probably sorcery as well. So don't follow that. Don't follow other mighty ones. Don't call upon other mighty ones. Don't replace the father's name with a title like the heathens do. Very important thing. Verse 4, but you who were faithful to Yahuwah, your Elohim, are all alive today. Verse 5, behold, I have taught you statutes and ordinances, even as Yahuwah, my Elohim, commanded me, that you should do so in the middle of the land where you go in to possess. Keep, therefore, and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who share here who shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Our leadership is important in order for us to be salt and light and other people to actually revere, reverence, and fear the Elohim, the mighty one that we serve. So that's all dependent on our leadership. If, you, if you're going out there and you're misrepresenting Yahuwah, guess what? People are not going to fear your Elohim. People are not going to respect your Elohim. People are not going to love your Elohim. You know, so it's very important that we don't misrepresent them. For what great nation is there that has a Elohim or a God so near to them as Yahuwah, our Elohim, is whenever we call on him? This also has to do with the mighty works of Yahuwah following his believers. That's another, that's another topic we should probably talk about too. Um, signs, wonders, miracles, you know, actually casting out devils and healing the sick. 
I still believe Yahuwah could do that today. And that, that is very important for us when we are delivering the good news. It actually brings a little bit more power and a little bit more evidence to what we're preaching. You know, when you can, when you got a person that's, that doesn't believe and is doubting like, your God, your God ain't real. And then we can cast out a devil and that helps. <laughs> that definitely helps, guys. Verse seven. Verse eight. What great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances so righteous as all this law which I set before you today? Okay, this is the Torah. This is the Torah. These are the instructions that Yahuwah gave to Moshe, wrote it on tablets and on a book. It's the whole package. It's the whole package. Verse 9, only be careful and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things which your eyes saw, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. But make them known to your children and your children's children. The day that you stood before Yahuwah, your Elohim, in Horeb, when Yahuwah said to me, Assemble the people to me, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. Okay? Uh, for the married men, that's our role. We're, we're called to teach our kids. And if you're not married, you're teaching younger people, younger than you. That's what you're doing. You're being a witness to people that look up to you. That's our job. Verse 11, you came near and stood under the mountain. The mountain burned with fire to the heart of the sky with darkness, cloud, and thick darkness. Yahuwah spoke to you out of the middle of the fire. You heard the voice of words, but you saw no form. You only heard a voice. He declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even the Ten Commandments. He wrote them on two stone tablets. Yahuwah commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and ordinances that you might do them in the land where you go over to possess. Be careful, be very careful, for you saw no kind of form on the day that Yahuwah spoke to you in Horeb out of the middle of the fire, lest you corrupt yourselves and make yourselves a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the sky, the likeness of any thing that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the water under the earth, and lest you lift up your eyes to the sky and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the army of the sky, you are drawn away and worship them. Okay, this doesn't have to do with not, not, not enjoying the sun, not drawing pictures of a sun or a moon or stars or animals. This has to do with worship and being drawn away by these things. Okay, this is very important because I know there's people that think, oh, you can't have any pictures at all in your house of anything. <laughs> you know, no, that's not true. The very first form of Hebrew was all pictures, by the way. Okay. Yahuwah uses pictures. Verse 20. But Yahuwah has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace, out of Mitzrayim, out of Egypt, to be to him a people of inheritance as it is today. Furthermore, Yahuwah was angry with me for your sakes. And this is Moshe speaking, obviously and swore that I should not go over the Jordan and that I should not go into that good land which Yahuwah your Elohim gives you for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not go over the Jordan, but you shall go over and possess that good land. Now, I could talk about leadership on there. And listen, Moses ain't perfect, okay? None of us are, none of us are perfect, but we're called to be perfect. But something we can learn from Moshe is uh he did a great job this i couldn't have done a better job than moshe i'll tell you right now i don't think i could have done a better job than him he was very patient with israel they were very rebellious complaining murmuring people i can't stand murmuring complaining people i really have very little patience for people that complain and murmur and gossip i can't stand those three topics we should add that to our uh <laughs> list of topics but topics we can't stand <laughs> 
<laughs> but Moshe, Moshe was patient, man. He 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 actually vouched for Yisrael, you know what I mean? Many times that they'd not get punished, you know, by Yahuwah, you know, and, and uh, but at the tail end, he had it. He just had it right at the end. You know, he was asked to speak to speak to a rock so that water could come out to the people. And he ended up being mad with the people like you stubborn, stiff necked people. And he and he hit the rock, you know, and Yahuwah punished him and wouldn't let him go into the promised land because he didn't he didn't believe um, Yahuwah fully to just speak to the rock and do what he asked. It's just something small. And, that, and that's another thing about Yahuwah. We never know. What side of his mercy or his justice will fall on? That's a very terrifying thought. You know what I'm saying? Many of us could get away with, with, with sins and, and with a few, you know, going, going astray, you know, and, and not getting an immediate consequence. Some of us might not. Some of us, we only do it one time. And we're seeing his, we're seeing his justice. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't seem fair, but... That's, that's that's a, one thing we should we should fear Yahuwah and be very careful. What's that, Mike? Uh, I think one thing with Moshe is uh, you hear a lot of people say how how rough he was with the people and everything like that. And but um, this is how this is how I see it. He was rough with the people. He called them foolish. He called them names. He talked to them just as Yahusha talked to you know people when he was ministering. And at the same time, you know. We can't sit here and say, oh, he wasn't doing out of love and stuff like that because the only reason why everybody wasn't killed was because of Moshe pleading for them. So he had a lot of love for them to the point where, again, Yah said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, waste all of them and start over with you. Moshe was fine. He was cool. Yah wasn't going to touch him. But he didn't plead for himself. He pleaded for them so that Yah wouldn't kill them. So he loved them. And he loved them. I, I believe that's why he got so frustrated with them. Same as Yahushua. Same reason why he called them snakes and hypocrites. Because he actually loves these people. And he hates the sin. So that's why um, I don't, I'm not a fan of people, you know, getting on people. You know, yeah, some people have their approach of, you know, preaching to people in a nice way. And, you know, very loving. But some are a little more rough. But you, you have to see where their heart is. If, like, again. You, you never know, know if Yahoo is sending that rough messenger. Right? Right. Yahuwah might be sending that rough messenger to this. And don't assume man. that person don't love you because of, uh, you know, your own emotions and your interpretation. Because, again, the only people who would think that are typically Christians who believe that love is an emotion. But Moshe is showing love not with emotion. He's showing love with action. Yeah. So. Yeah, right on. Yeah. It didn't, didn't, Moshe, didn't, Moshe to, um, didn't Moshe say erase my name out of the book? Yeah, yeah, sure enough. Didn't he say that? Yeah, sure did. I mean, that's serious, bro. It's like, take my name out the book. What? That man, I that man be pray. Be I'm not going to pray no prayer like that for some stubborn, rebellious people. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm going to do you. I'm going to dust that sand off my feet. Dust the dust off. Well, Yahoo, well, I'll take that back. Maybe Yahoo will work on my heart. You know, I'll say that. All right, let me, let me. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just going back to verse 13. Okay. You know, because like I said, I'm I'm still learning, but here it sounds like there was more than just ten commandments on these tablets. Um no, I, I would say he's actually he's actually including what was written as well. That's what I would say. Because the tablets I'm definitely actually, had the ten words, the ten the ten words, the ten statements. Uh -huh. I believe there was uh the book as well. Oh, okay. So Andy declared them to you. Yeah, we can go back. We can go back and see that. I think the ten words are clearly spelled out in Exodus thirty-four. Yeah. And the command, the, the what we know of as the commandments, are are, are not a ten. They are uh, the beginning of the right rulings that that our father started speaking to the people, and they got all scared and said, "Oh, don't speak to us no more. Stop right there. We don't want to hear no more." Moshe, you listen to the rest of this, and whatever he says, we agree to it. So that's what we're hearing. Nowhere in Deuteronomy where 20, or, or, or Exodus 20, where it spells them out, does it say the word 10 or the word words there. But in Exodus 34, it spells out real clear that he wrote these words on two tablets of stone, the 10 words. And they're a different list of words than what the world sells us as being the 10 commandments. 
And this is where uh, D, the whole book, the law and book of covenant comes in. Because I do believe that all of the covenant, not just the 10, I believe all the covenant, like he just, you know, like we just saw, was written on the tablets and put inside the ark, all the commands, all the covenant of commands, the book of the covenant, which again, was sprinkled with blood and all that stuff. But I'm not going to, you know, sidetrack. Yeah, so, it's but, a sidetrack. Hey, on you're on to something yes yeah, I, I would say that the ten, the ten commandments the tablets and the book of the law is all one package you you could read that later on in deuteronomy chapter 30 i but, agree i agree Dottie L, i see your hand is up go ahead brother um yeah uh for uh i i agree um i think is the reason that there's a reason for the 10 words or the 10 phrases because that's the one that they heard with their ears it was like the what was written on the tablets was what they can vouch they heard for themselves with their own ears, and then the rest they know that the, that Yah told uh, Moshe to write these in the book. So it was kind of like a it, the 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 two tablets is kind of like a like a token to let them remember what he spoke with his own words in their own ears. I think that's different than all the rest of the judgments, statutes, and judgments which. When they fell back, they told only Moshe to go listen to it with only his ears. So I think there's a, there's a difference to what he put on the tables and what he put in the book, but they're all one package. It's still coming out of Yahuwah's mouth. Um, as far as leadership, we were talking about uh, Moshe uh, not being able, you read about Moshe not being able to go into the promised land because of um, how he demonstrated his leadership, which... I think that this is an example of us. We need to make sure that we don't make the same mistakes as Moshe. Moshe uh, was supposed to obey in the eyes of the people. I remember when they asked him for water and he said, shall we give you water? He made, he put himself in the, amongst the, you know, connecting himself with Yah saying, shall we give you water? And then when Yah told him to speak to the, the rock so they won't see that it had anything to do with him, he hit the rock, and now they looked at him as if he was the one giving them the water as well. And that is what a lot of leaders are doing now. They're, they're allowing their, their congregations to become dependent on them to give them whatever, they, whatever they're asking for when it comes from the word and things like that. And that's why I love the way Brother D is executing because he's, a, he's the leader. Like, he's the leader of Devoted to Yah, and he is building other leaders to walk side by side, and that is what Moshe was doing. That's why he had Joshua, Caleb, 70 elders. That's why he had many people that was worthy to receive the Ruach because he built other leaders, and that's what... Um, that's what leadership is supposed to be. But we see Mo Moshe's mistake when he put himself at the same position as Yah and lowered everyone else under him and said, are we supposed to give you water? And then him executing, um, you know, get, giving them water. A lot of, uh, we need to stay clear from us trying to be the one to deliver everything. We need to, sometimes we need to sit back. Okay, you got the right answer. Still, chill, <laughs> you know, sit down for a little while and wait, wait, you know, there's an order, you know what I mean? So I, if Yah wants you to say it, he's going to bring the opportunity to you. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to move ahead of him. You don't have to hit the rock. You can just do what most, what, what Yah asks you to do and wait for your opportunity. You know, that's what uh, leaders, that's one of the, the core characteristics of a leader. Let's wait for Yah. Let's wait for Yah, you know. Sorry. There we go. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. That was deep. I'm gonna um I'm gonna I'm gonna end this shortly just to digress and let somebody jump in. Uh 23, verse 23. Be careful lest you forget the covenant of Yahuwah your Elohim, which he made with you, and make yourselves a carved image in the form of anything which Yahuwah your Elohim has forbidden you. Okay, idolatry is serious. For Yahuwah your Elohim is a devouring fire, a jealous Elohim. I would definitely say. The whole chat, the whole book of Deuteronomy, I love the whole book of Deuteronomy, but we could read the rest of Deuteronomy, but I think we get the idea, but I want to let somebody else get a chance to bring something up during our, we took a few minutes to get some scriptures together. Uh, Jadiel, you want to go next? Oh, yeah. This one, I'm, and this is short. Um, 
I didn't know, you know, I didn't, I, would, I didn't know he was going to read through. So I just was going to point some, some things out because I know we're just doing a quick synopsis real quick. So in, um, that, that, to me, that connects with, with uh, 1 Corinthians 12 where it talks about spiritual gifts because it talks about the, the, the leadership actually understanding their gifts. And I know that one of the major mistakes that, that happens is that people are thrown into leaderships and they don't even know what, they, what part they play in Yah's whole movement. You know, and they just, oh, I want to do what he's doing. I want to do what that person's doing. It, that's one thing that we need to recognize. We need to be satisfied in whatever gifts we have personally that, that Yah gave us personally. And I think the moment that we do this, then we can play a certain part that has power. You know what I mean? So in, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about um, starting from verse 4. It says, uh, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Ruach. Diversities of gifts, but the same Ruach. There are differences of administrations or service, but the same master. You see, that has to be in the forefront of our mind. Uh, there are diversities of operations, but it is the same Elohim which works all in all. But the manifestation of the Ruach is given to every man to profit without, you know, to profit everyone around you. You see what I'm saying? So the gifts that's given to us is supposed to profit everyone around us. For to one is given the, the Ruach of the word of wisdom, another the word of knowledge by the same Ruach. To another faith by the same Ruach. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Ruach. Uh, to another, the working of miracles. When it says the working of faith, sometimes uh, when we demonstrate faith, sometimes individuals demonstrate faith outwardly to the point where they, they shout out, they believe, they, they tell you, they profess this is going to happen. You know, some, some people keep it in. I'm a, I'm a person that, that keeps it in, you know, but other people, like Brother D, he's like, this is what's going to happen. And, you know, other people, they profess it. Like, this is, this is what's going to happen. That's one of the gifts of faith because it stirs me up. It stirs my faith up. It stirs other individuals fire up. We light each other up. You know, um, every single gift is to demonstrate outwardly for the benefit of someone else. It's not a gift for us to um, flaunt, you know. So a leader is never flaunting. A, a leader is constantly building someone up, us else up, lighting someone else's fire like encouraging someone else, whatever gift they have, they lay it at the Messiah's feet and say, this is for all of you. I'm serving you. You're not serving me because I'm a, a teacher. You're not serving me because I know a lot of verses by memory. You're not serving me. I'm serving you. And, and that's the mentality of a leader. I'm serving you. Messiah said it himself where he says, if you're going to be the greatest, you're going to have to be the servant. You're going to have to be the servant. And what's the first thing Messiah did when he came alone? He wrapped himself. He girded himself. And he served his disciples. If you're willing to serve your people that you're bringing to Messiah, then they're going to learn. They're going to learn to serve others. And that's how you build leaders. If you have everyone serving you, you know, you're destroying the image. And the, and the scripture says that to whom much is given, much is required. And those who are in leadership positions or, or desire a leadership position, if you, you are held at a higher standard. Earlier, um, Brother D was reading through Deuteronomy, and we were talking about how uh, some people, you mess up once and you're cut. Why? Because he knows that in your mind, you knew better than the last person. That's why the last person got three chances. You got one chance because the last person, he knew that the last person was weaker than you. So if you were going in a, in a leadership position, the scripture says that there's a higher condemnation for a leader. And this is another thing. Before you go into leadership, make sure you're willing to bear what it, the cost, bear the cost. You know, I fought against it for years. I ran away from it for years. Um, the first leadership position you have is at home with your families. You need to bear them on your shoulders. If you can bear them on your shoulders, then you can... You, you know, then the Yah is going to add people to your, to your burden, so to speak, <laughs> to your yoke. You know what I mean? So, but one thing I wanted to point out is that every person was given a gift in the body. The body, there's not a certain group of people that has the gifts and everyone else has to follow those people. The gifts was given to all men. It says he helped captivity captive and gave gifts to all men. 
So everybody has a gift and we need to acknowledge our own gift. Once we acknowledge our own gifts and we're executing it in that gift, then we can have a leadership position according to that gift. But every you have to recognize it and everyone else will recognize it. You don't have to tell no one else uh, what your gift is. We're all going to recognize it as you demonstrate it, as you, you know, show it, you know, but if you don't show it, no one's going to see. So make sure you know your gift and show it, like live it um, unto Yah. Don't do it for, for other people to see. Do it for Yah to see. And when Yah sees it, he's going to make everyone else see it, you know, and then that's how we can do it. Like, in the book of Acts, when they chose leaders, they were like, okay, choose among you who's honorable, who's more. They did that in the Torah as well. You know, who's honorable, who's serving Yah, who gives their life to Yah. And the people had people in mind because they did it in front of them. So they had it in mind. They said, oh, Stephen, call Stephen over here. He's going to be the deacon. And what did he, you know, what did he do? He was one of the, he was the first martyr, you know, gave his life for, for Yahusha. So we need to make sure that we know our own gifts, and then we need to make sure that we're living in the gift that Yah gave us so that way everyone can notice us when Yah, when it's time for Yah to put people in leadership. You know, I don't want to take too much time. Amen, amen, amen. That was great. Hallelujah, amen. That's awesome. Absolutely. We should definitely be praying. Good leadership doesn't mean you have a position that you desired but that you have a position that Yahuwah desires for you and that you're doing it well. That's good leadership. You know, don't covet something that's not yours. That's very important. Hallelujah. We should all be praying for these gifts to be manifest in every assembly, every community. You know, it's very important to the growth and the edification of the body and outreach. Uh, let's see here. Brother Gary, you got anything for us? I don't know if you stepped away. Hey, brother Gary, no, you got anything for us? You guys are doing such a good job. All right. Thank you, brother. Uh, let's see here. Mike, anybody raise your hand if you got something. I'll go with Mike next. Uh, I got something. Uh, yeah, to go along with what um, Jadio was saying, like, uh, you know, if you want to, if, you, if you're going to, you're going to lead, you know, you definitely have to serve. And then um, I'm looking at as a, obviously because I'm a man I'm looking at it as a man's perspective um it's funny because when we were looking up this stuff I was looking up male leadership roles and the only thing I was seeing was women women women's 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 roles like there's nothing about men so and most of it was like Judaism and stuff but like what so these men are so willing to talk about the women's role women's role women's role but they're not they're not willing to you know own up to their own and find out what they're supposed to be doing or talk about what they're doing. So I'll start off with Galatians, uh, Galatians 3.28. There's neither, there's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female. Right now we have this structure, but later on, that, that's why it talks about the, the bottom will be the top, the head will be the tail. Like right now we're the head over the woman, but it won't always be that way. So we're, we're equal in the kingdom. So we can't sit here with our chest puffed out, you know what I'm saying, stomping around, because in the kingdom, it's not going to be that way. She, There's no male nor female. I'm not over her in the kingdom. Right now, it's my responsibility, and it's the responsibility with leadership. And then here's part of the responsibility, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Um, this is for men. It says, watch, stand fast in faith, be brave, and be strong. Like, we, there, there's no room in there for, like, weakness. There's no room in there for, like uh, like what we said, be ready to bear the burden that, that's coming with leadership because it's not just about walking around with your chest popped out. And I, I feel like uh, that's actually probably a study I'm going to get into because it seems like um, we're so eager as men, you know, to put people down, whether it be if, if, if you are a leader in a community or something like that, or just as a husband with his wife or, a, you know, whatever. Um, definitely being able to even serve your wife serve someone who is under you because that is your job as a leader the leader is the one who's actually supposed to serve we, we live in western society you know we hire maids to serve us and hire people to serve us but yet we're the boss it's actually should be the other way in the kingdom the people who are in charge are the ones serving the people underneath you know so that's just i just like to talk about the little role switch there 
Thank you, Brother Mike. That's a very interesting thing you bring up. You know, I'm not sure what it's going to look like in the kingdom between male and female. If we go back to being one flesh or what, I don't know what that's all about, but we, we're all uh, the bride, so we're all. Yeah, it's very interesting, but we do know after Adam and Eve, right? Uh, the creation and then the fall, you know, this is, uh, this is where we're at. And, uh, you know, but yeah, we talked a little bit about it on Shabbat regarding um, w women and, and the male of the role of men and women, which I think we should discuss as well. Uh, the women's group right now, they've been discussing, you know, women's roles and uh, head coverings and things like that. And I think we should, from a men's pers perspective, also be, also be touching on some of these topics. And um, if anybody didn't see our Shabbat uh, video, uh, so far, it seems the majority so far, uh, we are not against ha letting women speak or having women uh, teach or uh, preach, evangelize. We believe that women can be used in these kinds of ways, uh, but we do believe that predominantly the role of men is uh, to be the eldership role, uh, to be the main teachers. Um, you know, things like that. But we're, we're, we see in scripture that women were also used. So uh, that's kind of where we stand on that. But that's a topic we could definitely go into with the scriptures as well. Anybody else got anything that they got during the few minutes? By show of hands. Roy, you got some real quick while you're. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a leadership. I was thinking and meditating on examples of leaders in the Bible that may show characteristics for us to imitate and then um, ultimately leading to Yeshua who's a Yahushua who's our greatest example and one thing that came to my mind was um, uh, Yeshua's example of when he's about to be crucified how he's washing the feet of his disciples and disciples think that's kind of strange but he's giving them a lesson by doing that in humility and servitude because if we coming into because we all agree that the foundation that's been laid out is Yeshua, Yahushua and the apostles this is the foundation laying down understand something happened between that time to our time where everything went crazy so I'm thinking, um, I always, when I started um, learning Torah, I always was thinking about, man, if only there was a person that could teach me how to really live this out. And then something clicked inside me and said, you know, we already have that. In the example of Yeshua and the example of the apostles who are the foundation of how we're supposed to live this out until the return of um, Yahushua. So I don't think we have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to come back because it was us that threw everything out of course. I mean, it's there. We just have to rediscover it. That's how I see it. I don't have any particular scriptures. There's a whole bunch of scriptures like in Thessalonians or the new covenant where um, Paul and the apostles are always exhorting the believers to imitate them how, you know, so um, they're showing their example in leadership and, and, and how they're dealing with the brothers and the community and stuff like that. So I think the examples is definitely there, just like uh, Brother Jedediah um, was pointing out how, you know, certain um, scriptures on in the new covenant this state, you know, how, how we have to be humble and how, how we all have different gifts and, and the gifts is not only to puff us up, but it's, it's supposed to um, edify the community and with the spirit of, uh, of servitude. But yet there is also a spirit of uh, accountability as well because things are done in order. I think it's just rediscovering um, uh, um, how, how it was laid down there because we have bad examples. We have bad examples, and, and those bad examples for many years are like um, are still with us, and we're trying to um, separate that and look at the kehilat that came out because they they the foundation is there. We just have to return to that foundation. That's all I have. 
Thank you, Roy. Appreciate it, brother. Good I'm stuff, mad. man. Absolutely. That's our, that's our goal. That's what we uh, are going to be aiming for that, to go back to the simplicity of what's already there in Scripture. Uh, we got the world religions, including Christianity. They've added so many things and made it super complicated. You know, they've turned the assembly of Yahuwah into a profit, non-for-profit, institutionalized organization, a business and a corporation you know and they've just super complicated the the simplicity of uh making disciples and and uh you know um you know being a family man you know being a family person a community person and uh you know but instead we get this business mindset and all these extra doctrines so that's our goal is to make sure we get all that out of us especially those of us here in this fellowship you know coming out of Christianity, we got a lot of doctrines and things, you know, that are still in there. You know, we might have came, we might have come out of Babylon, but some of Babylon is still inside of us, and we need to get her out. You know, some of her teachings are still is still in there somewhere. And uh, but thank thank Yahuwah for His mercy, right? And uh, that He's very merciful and patient with us. And um, I just pray that we all be the same with one another. And amen. I think the, the, the big word tonight is serving, serving one another, loving Yahuwah and serving one another and making sure that we're not coveting after a position. If anything, the position starts, you know, if you're not married, the position starts with how you tame your own body, how you tame your own temple, how you represent Yahuwah, um, you know, how you live in the secret place. And then as you get married, it's about how you, how you live in your marriage how you represent your family, how you take care of your family before you even consider trying to take on responsibility to, you know, take care of others. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I think that's a good, that's a good first shot. That's a good first, uh, take at leadership role, uh, from the men's group here. I, I pray that you guys, uh, found, found that helpful and encouraging and, uh, Shalom. We'll end it here.